and gentlemen, we're sending over 30% of our kids to the Ivy Leagues, baby. He does everything to get us to college. It's not a normal school. All that I care about is winning. Do you have any texts from a loved one that passed away? I do. I do. Yeah. Yes, my best friend, his name is Angel. I passed away in 2019. Well, what's your favorite memory of him? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> so the first time we, we went to a concert, and it was like our first time, like, you know, <laughs> um, trying to buy alcohol. That's where, like, I realized, like, okay, you know, like, yeah, this guy's gonna be, like, my partner where we're gonna get into a lot of trouble. He texted me saying, a doctor told him that he had um, um, leukemia. That's where um, he, send me like his last text. I know this is random, but if anything happens to me, like if I die, I just want you to know that you've always been my best friend. And if anything happens to me, do me a favor and watch out for Allison and Teresa for me. We never like had like all this like, like bromance, like, oh, I love you, bro, this and that. I did realize like, oh shoot, like this is, this is happening. And then I said, don't say that yet. Say that in the next 50 years. And that was it. That was my last message to him. But I do have one video he was passed out. I was um, drawing something <laughs> on his neck. You know, to be honest, I am, I'm tearless. <laughs> I've cried so many times. I don't think I can cry anymore. Her name is Blue Roxy Scott. She's my best friend and she passed away in 2020 from cystic fibrosis. For her whole life, I've known that she wasn't going to live very long. So the text messages are just me talking to her like I would talk to her any other day. So on September 18th, I said, hey, do you have any idea how I make skinny jeans cool? And she goes, mm, maybe a cute belt with a big shirt tucked in the front. And I go, wow, that was some good advice. I didn't expect that. And she just said, LOL. And then I text her, hi, I love you, you're a rock star. You got this. And she never responded. I feel connected to her all the time, but especially like watching Sunset always makes me feel connected to her anytime I'm at the beach or just rewatching videos. That was just at the beginning, her saying like that she loves me. She wasn't very like, open about those sort of things. So to like have her voice on video saying that she loves me is like super special. <laughs> so today I'm talking about my friend Angie. We met at the top of 2019 and right away we vibed. My favorite memory with Angie was actually at my 20th birthday party. At the end of the party, she went up to me and she was just like, thank you so, so, so much for inviting me. Like, I'm so glad I came. She really needed that and everything. And I was really glad to like bring some like light and life into her. So yeah, the last couple ones. So first she wished me happy birthday. She was like, enjoy yourself fully. And I was like, thanks, and I miss you. Come through tonight. And she's like, I can get out of work at eight. Um, you think I can still slide? And I was like, hell yeah. Like, you'll probably just miss the food, but that's all. And then she's like, sounds good. And um, that was the last message I had from her. So it wasn't until my second day of my last semester at Santana that um, our mutual friend Candice goes up to me and she goes, did you hear about Angie? She was like, Angie passed away. And it was really hard because she told me February 12th, 2020, and Angie had passed away January 12th, 2020. So like, I didn't get to go to her funeral. I didn't get any type of closure. But I had a lot of film roles from my birthday party. And so I was like, I need to develop all of them. I need to develop for them now. This is Angie. This is my favorite picture of her. I took the picture and I just like think of like the last thing she said to me and I think of like just how happy she was and it's just really nice to like be a light like that in other people's lives. My dad was a very intense kind of like big personality vivacious type of person. He dealt with a lot of anger issues. Um, a lot of that stemmed from had the childhood that he had to endure growing up. He would try to reach out to me a lot and I didn't really want to talk to him but the last time he reached out I was like 
I'm going to assert myself and I'm not going to text back until I want to. And that was a few days before he passed. He said, I know you're probably busy, but just wanted to say hi and I love you. And then he said, why you no say love you, dad, with like a crying emoji. And I said, I love you too. Sometimes when I get messages before meetings or read them right when I wake up, I forget to respond. And then um, in the morning he said, love you and have a less stressful day, pumpkins, which was a nickname he called me with some emojis and said, love you too. I'm hoping it's less stress. And then he said, my buddy had me covered for three days. Beer emoji, thumbs up, <laughs> laughing emoji. And I'd send a pot leaf, but I don't have that emoji. And I said, LOL, sadly. And then that was it. Just like benign, but it's weird that the last thing I ever said to him was the word sadly. Yeah, yeah it's just weird. My dad passed away in a motorcycle accident and he was drunk. He just always happened to be that guy that would get away with whatever and just be fun and it's fine. And it's like, it's fine until it's not fine. I, uh, I I have a text from my my brother who passed away. I've known him since I was like four. Um, we always called each other like that. He's he's my brother. <laughs> like, um, but he's not biological. He went missing. His mom called me and said that they couldn't find him. They didn't know where he was. He wasn't answering his phone. I had to drive around L.A. looking for him. Um, I eventually found him in Santa Monica, and then he was like expressing that he. Uh, you know, he was thinking about committing suicide. So I took him home and I was checking up on him um, as much as I could. And then the next day he went missing again. We found him, he, he had walked a little bit, um, like he wasn't really talking to me anymore. So I was like, okay, like we need to take you to the hospital and figure out what's going on. I got a text from him and he, he was just like, hey, James, are you are you here? I was just like, yeah. I'm, I'm here, we're, we're all here for you. Like, what's going on? 20 minutes later, I got a call from one of his friends saying that uh, he, he jumped off the building and he killed himself. And his phone was on him. And I never got a response to the text I sent him. I don't know, some, sometimes I forget like that he's not here. Like I'll have a dream and then I'll, it'll feel real. And then the next day I'll like go to text him and then I'll be like, wait, I can't. So I met Vincent Nava in my freshman year. As a person, he was just so outgoing. He never cool guyed anybody. Like he was the same person to everybody. Favorite memory of him is probably the last day I had with him because I think I cherished it the most because I didn't get to see him after that. We went to my friend's uh, house. We're all getting together, just friends. There's actually a couple pictures from the days before from another party, and I sent them to him. And he was like, my family, I love you. And I was like, I love you more. He was like, where you at? And I was like, Sh my bad, boo. I was like, literally, with my whole family came through. I'm at my crib. I'm gonna get ready right now and head over, pull up. And then he was like, for sure, on my way, sexy. And then I just gave him the hard eyes. That was just like, literally the last day I got to see him. The next day he was he drove to LA and then he swerved and then he hit a back of an 18 wheeler and he was in a coma for a couple of days and he just never made it out. I just cherish those like last moments that I had with him and I always have him on my chain all the time and I wear him every single day. I don't ever take this off right here. So I'm talking about my dad today. He um, passed away last year, last March. Um, he had terminal cancer. He and I were probably a lot similar than I like to admit. He was a professor, he taught art, but the last uh, text exchange that we have, I was on my way to go visit one of my best friends. He texted me right before I got on the plane. Love you, have a great trip. Learn from the world with others dear to you your pop. And then I said, landed. When he got sick, it, um, it changed how he looked. And so I don't really have very many pictures of him during that season, just because he looked really sick. And so I have some pictures of us when I was little. That's me when I was little. Um, 
And that's my dad. I recorded his voice a lot, so I have a lot of his voice. Yeah, this is Pop. I'm just calling to see if you got there, okay? That's it. <laughs> I think that's the thing I miss most is having someone to come home to. Just a little voicemail to check in and see how I'm doing. Is there anything that you would want to say to her? I would just say that I miss her. I miss you so much. One thing that comes to mind is say, let's have a beer. I like to have, yeah, I like to have one more beer with him. I just miss you and I hope that you feel better. I hope that you don't have like that stress of your body anymore. I, I'm glad that I got to show you that I loved you and that you, you knew that. I miss you and I love you very much. And I hope that you're doing well wherever you are and I hope you're happy. Dealing with somebody that passed away close to you is a rock of emotions and it doesn't hit everybody the same. And you know, sometimes I'm just driving in my car and I'll be crying and like it would just hit me because like I realized that I really can't see my best friend again. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just feel the emotions and go through it. And I would definitely talk to people about it. Focus on the community you have around you because so many people love you. And um, I think it's just about the little ways that you preserve them and like you keep them in your memory. I think you just have to continue to live for them. And there's gonna be really bad days and you're gonna miss them so much. But then there's gonna be really good days and you're just gonna know that they're smiling at you.